one and Trillism, and welcome to Aurora for X, the incredibly in-depth, complicated, frustratingly so, and amazingly so, space strategy game. We are currently in the solar system, the Sol system, and are building up our, well, industry, defenses, colonies, everything. We actually have our first batch of actual, honest warships today. Uh, we have the Fish T1 through 6, all of which are fast attack craft, so they're all 1,000 tons or less. But they are actually warships, which is the start. So uh, we will refresh over here and we'll see the battle fleet has six fish tees. Great. That's nowhere near enough. We need far more. Uh, we need far more. So we're going to go over and we're going to build a load more. Uh, we do need to at some point build the command versions, but that will mean retooling. And we don't want to have to retool and then retool back to build more. So we're going to try and build, I'm going to say 30 fishties. We'll see. So let's just uh, construct, go to battle fleet, fishty, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Now, um, there is another motion that has been tabled by the RT for the opposition uh, based, and it is not currently passed, but it does require us to have ground forces and a standing navy. Navy stand? Operational navy, I guess? Um, of a certain tonnage. So we have to start bearing that in mind that there might be a motion coming out that requires a 50,000 tonnage navy. So mm, probably want to prepare for that. Obviously, each pack is a 1,000 tons. So that's helping a little bit. But we also have the Dracos Heavy Shipyard and the Day Shipyard, both of which are 10,000 tons and will be ready to start on production of actual vessels in the not too distant future we're mostly at the moment waiting for our jump drive tech to be done but when it is we can start uh doing that although i would kind of like to have at least some technology to do with lasers we have a little we could really improve on it but it is what it is um so for now uh yeah power proportion is gonna be done next year okay okay we've got the first of our exploration ships completing the overhaul i'm not gonna order them back out until a few of them are done just for simplicity's sake. But we've also got the future plants who are like, hey, we moved some mines. What do you want us to do? Um, you can guess it's going to be more infrastructure. It's always going to be more infrastructure. Well, it's not always, but for a long time, it's going to be infrastructure. Okay, so uh, we now have one, two, three, four, five of our six exploration ships now just waiting. Actually, kind of bored. They're just sitting there going, hey, can we go do something? Uh, we also have our research into boat bays done. So we can actually start building a ship to be able to take our uh, soon to be developed platforms. Well, actually, they're actually being built right now. We're actually on our fifth just got built and we can dump them and defend a point, which is going to be particularly handy. So uh, we're going to just go to our research. We're going to go to logistics and we're going to say, hey, that uh, that tractor beam looking pretty sexy right now. Well, can we work on that like some more like that seems like a pretty good thing to do. Uh, it will be done in a few years. We don't actually need it done ASAP, so we can reduce that. Work on our beam range because that will be something we want for our ship. Um, let's actually... Yeah, lower that a little bit more because we do want our damage control available as well. Yeah, we might even want gauze fire rate no we don't have tracking speed really we need a tracking speed upgrade to really use our gauze cannons effectively um for now this will just have to work and we'll, we'll adjust things as we go okay so that's boat bay done uh right we're gonna need to tell which one is not done the rhodium okay so we have one two three four the Yabo system. Someone needs to go to the Yabo system. So off you go. Um, someone needs to go to the Davit system. Someone needs to go to the Davit system and go through the jump point that we have. Someone needs to finish off the whole the Hoyle system. We only got 46% there, so. Off you go to the Hoyle system. There we go. And then... Slaying Hurdle does need to be completed. And also Distant Roman needs pretty much anything done in it. Three, four, and Jazza. Okay. 
Um, the Thulium, you can go to the Distant Ruins and stuff now. Now that should cover that. Right. Uh, after doing Boat Bays, is there anything we're waiting on that we might want to do? Mm, the Jump Squadron size. But honestly, this ship with Boat Bays is just going to be going out and deploying these fighters. It's most likely not actually going to need to be military because you can put military fighters into a commercial ship. Um, they will expend some of their deployment time by doing so, but that's fine. These fighters, these orbital weapon platforms, have a lifespan of, what was it, 50-something years? That's fine. Like, a, a two-month voyage is nothing, so let's start designing a new ship. And this is going to be um, the Ragland uh, Anchorage, no armored cruiser, assault carrier, um, not really. Auxiliary carrier? That might be what it is. Auxiliary carrier, I think, is a good designation. Okay. So, uh, we need to decide kind of like how big this is going to be. One thing I do want to check is um, there isn't a bigger boat bay. Oh, there's the hangar deck. Yeah, what if we went hangar deck instead? This might make this easier. Because boat bays are only 250 tons, aren't they? Um, yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to just leave the ragland for the moment. We're actually going to switch you over from the tractor beam to the hangar deck, which is going to take a bit longer. How long is the hangar deck going to take? 65. We want it earlier than that. Let's start playing around. Um, we're going to delay a few projects. I want this to be ideally beginning of 63. Okay, the Rodium's completed her overhaul and we'll send her up to Slaying Hurdle or Jazza. I think we'll go Jazza on this one because that also has unexplored jump points as well. Uh... Yeah, there it is. Okay, we've discovered the new system of Yabashido. He's off from Davit. Let's look at this place. It has only four planets, 32 asteroids, three comets. Two of them are vaguely livable. One of them... One of them... Oh, damn. One of them is actually pretty livable. It has a liquid hydrosphere uh, of 16%. Its temperature is acceptable. Its atmosphere is ammonia nitrogen with an atmosphere pressure of 1.9. So, obviously, not great for us. That might be livable to, like, some sort of alien race. We'll have to proceed with caution here. But it's an interesting system. Potentially useful. Okay, we just managed to get ourselves a Sorum Harvester and a Max Jump Squadron Size upgrade for our jump drives, which is very handy. Uh, let's go and have a look at that. So, power propulsion. What do I want to work on next here? Max squadron jump size going up to 5 is always handy, but that's 8,000. I don't think we can really justify that. Um, jump drive efficiency. Now, that's maybe something that we could really talk about. So, the efficiency means, like, how much of a percentage of the total tons it can jump does the jump engine take? So, if you want to jump, say, 10,000 tons. Currently, with our efficiency of 4, it would need to be one fourth of 10,000 tons, 2.5k. So, you know, it's a pretty chunky jump drive. If we wanted to go to 20,000 tons, it'd be 5,000 tons. Now, by going to efficiency 5, we're making it a fifth rather than a quarter. So, we're saving ourselves, you know, 500 and 1,000 tons in both those cases. It's very, very good. Uh, capacitor recharge rate, also good for beam weapons. The fusion reactor, that's where we're going to start seeing significant gains. Because that fusion reactor is going to then unlock um, much better drives. Magnetic confinement fusion drives, I believe. The magnetic fusion drives are kind of that first tier of this is a good drive. Ion drive is the first tier of this is a kind of acceptable drive. The fusion drive is this is good. And although it's going to take a while, I think it might be worth investing in this. Although, obviously, we've got maximum engine power times two. That would aid our missiles. Um, bonuses to, like, you know, 
jump drives and stuff, the efficiency. I think we go for the Stellarata fusion reactor. And I'm going to assign... What else do we get? We got the Sarum Harvester. Let's say seven for now. We might want to up that later. That will be done in 66 though. Oh. Um, what's the next one? The Harvester, which is construction production. Okay. Well, money is okay right now. By the production rate, we don't really need to up that. That's okay. We could do the jump point stabilization module again. Yeah. Maintenance production rate. We don't need to touch that just yet. Orbital mining. It's not something we've touched, so we're going to leave that for the moment. Mining rate. It might be worth going to the actual research rate. Um, shipyard operation, 5% time cost saving is pretty quick. I think we'll grab that and then we'll probably go all the way into research rate. We might want to touch shipbuilding rate first, but the research rate, well, 20,000 is also going to significantly improve our research speed. Which, you know, you can't really knock. So we'll get the um, shipyard operation first. Also, this music's way too epic for just, you know, researching. Um... And that's going to take until 64 because we only assigned three to it. That's fine. Okay. Oh, carry on. Right. Here's the fun part. We should probably actually color that event. Um, ship construction is kind of like an important event. At least I feel that. Let's call you pink. maybe like a brighter pink. Maybe like a that. Yeah. Okay. So we've got more fish tees. We're actually up to 18 now. I've been building some in the background. Um, but we will again order more fish tees. That'll bring us up to 26 in total. Uh, but we also got our stabilization ships, and that's going to be really important because it means we can finally start expanding into the outside world. And particularly, we want to expand, obviously, into Volgaris to be able to defend that, but also into places like Subject Delta. Um, so we're going to have to work on that. We can also maybe consider building something with those Saurium Harvesters that we only just unlocked. Um, I'm thinking we want to build something pretty chunky, like a massive orbital refueling station that will just sit above a gas giant, harvest it, and then people can refuel it, or we can just ship the fuel from there back to, say, Earth. Um, in fact, to do that, we'll need the refueling hub, which I believe is under logistics. Refueling hub. Yes, it's also 10,000. Okay, maybe we won't do that just yet. That's, um, yeah. Logistics has a lot of stuff going on right now. Please call again later. Either way, the father practices. Uh, we've got five Jagnus just in there. Um, survey fleet, I believe they're in. Yes. Detach. Detach. And detach. All right, we're going with standing order. If the fuel gets to less than 20%, um, then to go back and refuel. Now, the way this is going to work is we're going to need to move them to a jump point. So we go to the Volgaris jump point, and then we say stabilize the jump point. And it'll take, you know, 10 days to get there. But when it gets there, it'll then spend 360 days, unfortunately. That's, you know, it's it, it's fine. It is what it is. Strategist will do the same thing. Uh, we could stabilize the jump point to Kalika, but honestly, why bother? There's not much in there. We will eventually want to stabilize it, but for now, that's fine. And then Mr. Gray. Uh, we'll stabilize that jump point. Now, here's the thing. Although we're going to stabilize the jump point, we can travel through it. We can't travel back because it's not stabilized on the other end. So what we'll do is say, hey, once you've gone and stabilized the jump point, please transit through and then stabilize the other side. And we'll do the same with the two, which is going through the strategist. So we'll say uh, standard transit. And then stabilize. And then three is going to go to Mr. Gray. Done. 
Now they'll stabilize one end, go through, stabilize the other. It's going to take them two years. So a little while. Um, fortunately, it's going to be maybe four years before we get to subject Delta properly. Which is a shame because we do want to start working on expanding up there. Um, but for now. And we're now up to 20 Jagnas, which means that we have enough to... You guessed it. Split off. We're going to detach you. And then we're going to rename you. Next 10. And then this is going to be Fleet 2. Um, I wonder, actually. What if we create a subfleet? And then we detach that subfleet. It might be easier if we did this. We'll just send the Jagnus back up there. So this is 10 Jagnus. Um, that's no one in there, so why don't you delete that fleet? New subfleet. A cargo fleet. What we'll do is we will rename you to FT Jagnus X10 2. And then. We'll take the new subfleet and rename you to Cargo Fleet. And because that subfleet was created above Earth, it is above Earth, even though there's no one in it. Um, we can refresh that. Goes back to the top. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit quicker than trying to drag everyone between the fleets. Okay, so I'm going to just get them to do a infrastructure run they're going to go to Europa and to Titan and what I've said is hey go to Europa go to Titan go to Europa blah 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 and once they've done that a total of um five times each then they refuel and that should save us a bit of time because they have the fuel to do that so it should save us a bit of time on the turnaround because they're not refueling every time and then we'll repeat that batch of 10 total installations nine times and there we go that should take them about five years to do uh Jagnath are doing a, a little bit of a longer one and or Jeff one that is sorry and then gray are doing a kind of similar thing with i think just titan as titan's a little bit more difficult to colonize and when you're doing the corundium there that's gonna be a tough one okay so we're actually up to 32 fish teas now we're gonna build uh, a few more and that'll take us up to 41 when everything's complete which might be a good point to then do the command ones because 40 with 8 missiles each will give us a good chunk of missiles. Like, that should be enough if, you know, in the short term, if not anything else. Now, um, scientist Tetsuo Duncan has been awarded the Research Class 1 based on completed 5 research projects. Good for you, Tetsuo Duncan. You've given us the hangar deck. So, with that said, we're going to pop over here. Uh, logistics, tractor beam, commercial hangar. Ooh. Ah, it's the commercial hangar deck. Right, everything else is military. Well, this is the one we need. Okay, so more logistics. Um, I know we're, again, waiting for another project to be done before we can build a ship to take our defenses. But it's it's necessary. I, I didn't realize that the commercial hangar deck was a different variant. Um, it's less efficient, though, so it does take up more space, but less space inside it, if that makes sense. Um, we'll take one off the Stellar Fusion Reactor. Apply it here. You know what? Let's actually cut the Fusion Reactor quite a lot. Hmm. Brings it to September. No, we'll accept December on that. And the tantalum is saying it can't do any more in Hoyle. So we should see Hoyle 100%. Okay, tantalum, lots of words. Uh, slaying hurdle, easy choice here. No one's researching it and it does have stuff left to do. Um, although that said, one, two, three, four, Nelt tab does need work as well. Oh no, Nelt tab just uh, doesn't need work. It just as an unexplored jump point, which is fine because we're not actually going any further. Yeah, seems fine to me. Okay, carry on. Hello, 
hello. Hello, 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 hello. Rhodium has received an unintelligible communication from asteroid 136 in Jazza. Now, we did encounter the Jazza aliens earlier. Um, 136. Do we know what 136 is? Or do I have to look for them? You know what? We'll maybe do this a different way. Rhodium! Hey. Uh, can you list every asteroid for me? I realize there's a lot of them. Rhodius is unable to carry out its primary standing order. Interesting. That means you've been to every one of these. Yeah, you're saying you're 100%, but you didn't detect anything on the asteroid. Pop over and do a geological survey again anyway. And you're only going to take 11 hours, so what we'll do... Okay. Aha! That... Is asteroid 136. Although we're only detecting ships. We actually aren't detecting a colony. So I guess we just heard from the ships in orbit of it. Is there actually anything on the ground there? Oh, we discovered minerals on the asteroid. Had you not scanned it? You said you were 100%. Now you're saying you can't actually do any more. I don't know if I believe you or not. Hmm. Okay. Well, it seems evident here that there are aliens who are just hanging around here. Do we want to just leave the rhodium there to try and get communication with these aliens who are in orbit? Uh, it might be seen as... A bit provocational? Or do we try exploring further? They've stabilized the jump point, so... I don't know. It seems like that might be a bit of a... A bit of a sore spot if we jump further and it turns out to be like the home system. What we could do is we could stick around here. See if we can maybe just get a bit of a chat going on. What we'll do is we'll say our standing order is... um. No order, no order. And you just stick out there for a little while. Hopefully that doesn't provoke him too much. Yeah, we're getting unintelligible communications. Uh, full communication established with the Jazza aliens. The race identifies itself as the Grosvenor Protectorate. Even at contact uh, is originating at jump point one unexplored. So they are definitely coming through that jump point. Well, that's to be expected. Um, actually, Jazza has multiple jump points. Oh, yeah, it's got two over here. How far away are these? Oh, yeah, billions of kilometers. Wow, okay. And the other one's at Wall Stable. Very well, let's have a look at the Grosvenor Protectorate. Um... We know about this system. We know a little bit about those ships. We don't really know anything about them. We're going to call you the... Um, the GRP. The Grosvenor Protectorate. Yes, that seems acceptable. Okay, yeah, we're talking to them. That's fine. Well, I think we maybe give them a chance to talk to us while we're here because they might just tell us to leave, which 
if that is the case, that's fine. But they also might want to just continue diplomatic relations, which it looks like so far they want to do. Oh, right. Okay, here we go. Um, the Grosvenor Protectorate has sent a message to the G1 Rhodium suggesting that our forces leave Jazza in the near future as the system lies within the territory. Um, yes, we will probably just agree to that. Like, I don't think we've got a reason not to. Uh, so, let's refresh our list up here. What would be the nearest place to really go help out? One, two, three. Distant Roman needs to be explored further. So we'll do a movement order to Distant Roman. Go through the jump point. Great. But then we're going to go up to Jazza as well. And we're going to say, hey, um, we are going to say protection status is... No, that's the wrong one. Uh, I want overview. There we go. I'm going to flag you as Grosvenor Protectorate. Uh, we also need to produce another fish tea. Nice. Uh, yeah, well, I think we'll produce another one. Go to 42. And that'll be where we stop before we go on to the actual like, command and control ships. Good job. Good work, Rhodium. Actually, maybe we should like give a medal to the Rhodium. Hmm. Um, we have a medal that we can just hand out. I think most of them are, like, automatically handed out. Gallantry in combat. Having successfully established contact with another race. Oh, it's the diplomacy medal. That seems fine. Okay, Rhodium. Commander Elena Dracos and Knight Elizabeth Moritzink. Um, okay. Let's go find you in the database. So, commanding officer is Commander... Uh, oh. I feel we've got a slight issue here where we maybe don't have enough people for our ships. Either way, um, we're looking for Eleanor Dracos. So Dracos, 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 Dracos. There we go. Wrong one. Yeah, you don't seem to have got the medal. I assume it's because they initiated contact with you rather than the other way around. Okay, diplomatic medal. Optional citation. For, um... The first Xenos communication, the first successful diplomatic communication with a Xenos race. Brackets, um, GRP. There we go. Now she has a diplomatic medal. But I think we also need to give Elizabeth Morsink the same because, you know, science officer kind of important in this. Um, also, it's the very first one. Oh, God, this is going to be so difficult to find. Rachel Morsink. Damn it, Morsink. Elizabeth Morsink. There we go. That will award you a medal. The diplomatic one. Uh, having six foot established contact with another race award and communications with the 
uh, GRP. Done. Medals for all. Right, let's close that up. Medals don't actually do anything, by the way. Perfectly 100% RP. That's fine by me. Right. Um... Okay, Sarah Borealis just got the uh, research class two. Complete a research project. Oh, nice. Um, we've got beam fire control and a new slipway. So we're going to go deal with that slipway first. That's the day shipyard. Yeah, that's 10,000 tons with two slipways. Well, that's probably going to be is that's going to be making the jump ship for the military. And then this one is going to be the actual like not jump ships are going to go with they just have more DACA. so this is going to be a command ship and this is going to be a non-command ship so what we're going to do is just going to say uh until we actually design that ship just start building up to like twenty thousand tons yeah because then we can stop that anytime and it'll still be progress um right research got a beam fire control system what do we want next? Um, probably fire control speed. If we're going to shoot down missiles, we need that. Active grav sensor would go from 12 to 16, which is a significant increase. Um, we're basically giving an extra third power to our sensors by doing that. Hmm. I think for now, we'll go for the... Uh, mm. It needs to be fire control speed rating. Uh, unfortunately, it just does need to. So, we'll work on that. Also means that we need to work on turret tracking gear at some time. Do we have anyone doing energy weapons right now? We don't. Oh, okay. Um, we're going to have to rip someone away from the Stellarator again. Uh, Rochelle Haley. Someone's going to need to deal with this. Grr, where am I going to get more people to do stuff? I need more research labs. This is this is awful. This is like a nightmare. I need more research labs. Can I take one away from you? No, that puts you in the wrong year. Um, I guess the Stellarator is going to get ripped apart again. Sorry, Stellarator. I guess we'll take one off damage control. Done. Okay. Carry on. Ooh, we've completed uh, spaceports on Earth. Okay, that gives us 5% more that we can use. Uh, obviously, we could put this towards the green field, which is actually 15% done now. Or we could up our focus on research, etc. Um, research, while it might sound tempting, we don't have the people for. Again, we have a massive worker shortage issue. So putting more research labs down is really not going to have any effect if we can't staff them. I, I want to increase research facilities because, again, that was kind of the mandate to an extent. Uh, we had a policy saying minimum 10% to finance and to research labs minimum so i would like to increase that especially because the government's kind of aim was technological progress but unfortunately it, it just wouldn't do anything right now so instead um we're probably gonna want to grab five percent more on the green field just because that won't be affected really yeah uh, we might also want to up our number of Wakazashis. I want to say we maybe up it to double that. So we had another 320. This is going to be 420 now. Uh, not thousands. That would be terrible. Alright. Carry on. Brutal, but it is what it is. Okay, we've now found the Gone Forever system. Well, well, well. 
This is an interesting system. 10 planets, 48 moons, 108 asteroids. Um, two of these are near habitable. Pretty low temperatures. But damn, that's a lot of stuff. This is potentially quite an interesting system. Hmm. Like that. How far out is this? Oh, that's a 40 billion out. Like, what the hell is that? Is that like a Super Jovian or something? You're just a terrestrial planet? With a hydrogen helium atmosphere, which is admittedly like barely any pressure at all. Uh, an ice sheet. That's a terrestrial planet just orbiting at 40 billion kilometers. Wow. Okay. That's fascinating to me. Right. Um, if we have a quick look over in shipyards, we will see that you have an available shipyard at uh, Sipway. Uh, unfortunately, we'd have to retool. We're currently building a slipway, so we won't retool just yet. When you've finished that slipway, we'll retool. We'll start on our command and controls. Okay. The Father Prax has just stabilized the jump point between Volgaris and Sol. And if we refresh, we now have a jump point. This is actually completely, perfectly normal for us to go between these two systems now. Um, what we'll do is we'll get the Father Prax 1... To start working on stabilizing the point to agent. We might not stabilize the other side of that jump point. Just because I'm a little bit afraid of what happens if we do. And some comes through and then they wander through. So we probably won't stabilize the other point. Until at least we have a lot of defenses in place. But we can stabilize our side of it. Okay and we got damage control as well. So that's a defensive system. Which I think we've kind of got all the good ones now shields you need to invest a lot in so we're going to kind of ignore them probably till we've got the next level of armor so we're actually gonna probably gonna say hey invest merely one research lab into the next level of armor and that way we can always up that if we want um yeah it's gonna take ages that's right but we can then put our next three Onto things like, hey, this fire control speed that we really needed to improve. Um, like the Father Prax 2 is done. I don't know if we want to go further than Stratus just yet. We haven't really even finished our survey on Davit. Um, so we're probably just going to pull back a little bit. Um, we did also want to potentially go to Zanmar. So we're going to be probably... Spanning up to Subject Delta and then across to Zanmar. So what we'll have you do is we'll have you come back to the Sol system. Um, Mr. Gray has been stabilized on one end but not the other end. So we'll then standard transit through there. And we'll go to Gunslayer. And then we'll say stabilize jump point. Standard transit. Then go to Zanmar. Stabilize jump point. Standard transit. Um, two, three, one. It is quicker to go through Zanmar. And then we'll stabilize on the other end. And then we'll be in Zanmar. Now that's going to take a long time. There's one, two, three, four stabilization. That's four years plus travel time, which is um, a third of a year. So it's going to take almost two, uh, almost four and a half years to do that. But again, that's fine. These stabilization ships are going to be doing this for a while. I'm not as worried by the speed on those. All right, and Fire Tax 3, stabilize Mr. Gray. We're going to stabilize Subject Delta, since that is a, a pretty juicy one. So we're going to go back to Mr. Gray. Now, one of the things we want to do is we know that there are aliens in Jazza. And Subject Delta is not far away. They haven't explored this way yet. At least we presume they haven't stabilized the jump or anything. We want to stake our claim on Subject Delta sooner rather than later, because... If they come and then they start putting down colonies, they're going to say it's their space. We don't want that. We want to be able to kind of be like, no, this is ours. Shoot. So we're going to try and get subject out as soon as possible. Um, then I think we probably just let you lie for the moment. Slaying Hurdle is a nice system, which is also, you know, no jump points from there. So we might want to, you know, make a way in there. I think we probably will. We'll at least give the order. We can always cancel it later. 
Oh no, Tetsuo Duncan developed a significant medical issue that's going to affect his long-term health. Research project, commercial high-end deck. Tetsuo Duncan, no, you're too good. Please don't. Okay. Um, right, we've got slipway added to Pestoto, which we're waiting for. And we also uh, finished research into Gore's uh, cannon firing three. So, um, first things first, you have nice slipways and you're waiting. We are going to have you uh, retool for the Fishty command. Won't take too long at all, actually, because they're pretty similar. Done. And then we're going to also want to go over to our research. And we just completed Force Cannon Fire 8. Um, that's under Missiles Kinetic. Whoops. There. Fire rate 4, which is kind of like the good point when you want to be like, right, this is where I consider decent PD. It's going to be 15, which ugh, not not great. Um, we could work on boosting our warhead strength. I think that might be what we do, but we won't want to assign too many people to it. Like, this is not going to be a primary concern. So we're going to put two people on that. Um, we'll also add a second one to the armor. Even that's going to be miles away. It's worth, you know, maybe having two on it if we can afford it. Uh, the terraforming, again, we don't actually have any terraforming stations out. And we won't for a while. So, honestly, it doesn't matter when terraforming rate is increased because it's not going to make a difference until then. Uh, logistics, you're going to be done pretty soon. No point really doing anything about that. Fusion reactor. Yeah, we've ripped enough people away from you. You should have that. Okay, the Tantalum is saying it's done in Slaying Hurdle. So, Slaying Hurdle's got 3% left. Tantalum, why are you saying this? Let's exclude Surveyed, and let's include Asteroids. No, Comets. No, Moons. Oh, Slaying Hurdle C. Okay, let's see why this is. Because it's probably going to be because you're miles away. There we go. Yeah, no way we're bothering going 120 billion kilometers for that. So I'm happy to leave that at three remaining. Um, let's just go back to where we were. Okay, um, we could send you up to distant Roman. Um, but honestly, these ones are much closer to Sol. So I think we're going to send you to Davit. Auto route. Davit. Unexplored jump point. Go for it. Oh, hello. Got ourselves an error. Okay, we got our retooling in. And we got our science team done. So, we're going to go to... Uh, shipyards. Fish to command. One, two, three, four. We've got 42 fish tees currently. I'm going to say we go five. And then we can build maybe a couple more fishies afterwards. And that way, like, one in every ten is going to be a command vessel. That seems reasonable to me. You only need one command vessel to fire. But if we do lose all our command vessels, then no one fires. So that seems like a pretty good spread. Okay. You're doing that. Uh, we'll also tell you to then just retool back to the fishty. Because, hey, why not? Um, do, 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 do. We've got a commercial hangar deck, which means we're going to be flipping back over to logistics. Oof, logistics are really doing a lot of work. And then we'll get you back in work on the ship ship tractor beam. Although this time we'll maybe only assign like five people to it. Mm. Let's make that six. Why not? We'll add two more to the Stellarator reactor. We'll add one to boosting the strength of our missiles. We'll add... One to our turret tracking speed. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay, and that means we can now build ourselves commercial hangars, which means we can build the auxiliary cruiser we've been talking about. Not the auxiliary cruiser, the auxiliary carrier, the Ragland. So, gonna go down, find ourselves a hangar deck. Um, refresh deck. Uh, 
Oh, commercial hangar deck. It's not in hangar deck. Why? Why would you? Ugh. Okay. Now, this takes 1,600 tons and can carry 1,000 tons. That's eh, not a great ratio. But we want to be able to carry, what, 10 in a go? Um, that's 5,000 tons. That's not a lot, actually. Do you want to carry 20 in a go? That seems more reasonable. Okay. Um, right. That's said and done. I'm going to chuck on a tiny little passive sensor, just in case. Uh, we're going to need an engine. We could go for the more powerful engine. Which I think might be the way forwards here. Oh, right. Yeah, obviously. The, actually, that's just a tiny engine. I forgot what we were using that for. Um, yeah. Your range. Oh, completely acceptable. I wonder. It might be worth building a more powerful one. Like, I know this is, again, it's, it's a carrot. It's not meant to fight. But it's going to be hopping around a bit, and we might need to replace things in a bit of a, you know, a bit of a hot moment. So what if we were going to go a 50% engine? We'd get a good chunk more bang for our buck. It will eat a lot more fuel. I'm okay with comparing this. So, you know, normally I'd do something more complicated. I'd pop into the A4 you know, calc thing, etc. Um, but whatever. I'm happy we're just trying this out. This is the Steely Blake commercial iron drive uh, designed purely for power. Now, note, by the way, if we do pop down to 40%, it does half the fuel usage, which is very tempting. But this is mostly going to be an experimentation. So we're going to instant this and just say yes. Then we're going to refresh tech. And what if we plopped you on here? Uh, the range would need to be buffed. Oh, whoops. That's maintenance. Uh, the... Where is it? Fuel, 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 fuel. Yeah. And I think we might even want to just, just in case, put a very large fuel storage. Go a million fuel on this. It's got a large range. But this is because this vessel can now travel pretty much wherever. Um, it can carry 20 defense pods, chuck them down, and then leave. It calls a pick up 20. It doesn't have any armor or anything, but again, it doesn't really need to. This is just our auxiliary carrier. It's commercial. It does the job. I don't know what we'd really want to add to this. I made a mistake, didn't I? I meant to make the Ragland able to jump with a jump drive. I realized this in 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 post as soon as I finished the episode. Uh, we're going to just quickly be like, hey, you've only done 5%. We're going to cancel that. Um, yes, we would like to cancel that. Sorry about this. Um, we we'll go over here. We're going to go, hey, Ragland, uh, I can unlock the sign because Space Master mode. Um, right. We want to jump you. How big does the jump drive need to be? It needs to be a quarter of your size. Is it a quarter of your size? We didn't get the extra tech yet, did we? Maybe we did. Okay, cool. Um, a fifth of your size. If you're going to be 24 and a bit, let's say 25. Um, if you're 40,000 ton, you have an 8,000 ton drive. The 2,000 tons left. Okay, what if you were... Yeah, it's going to be a lot bigger of a ship. It's not going to be able to be produced at um, some of the places that I was hoping. We can assign it to this one, though. 42,000 ton. Now, I was hoping to produce freighters here, but honestly, that's fine. Um, okay. Well, we could potentially uh, put more commercial hangar decks in if we really wanted to. Um, make it bigger. Make it 42,000 tons. Hell, we could put more engines in. That's what we'll probably do. Uh, let's make you a 40,000 ton vessel. That's an 8,000 ton drive. 
So a design tech. And we'll go down to jump drive. Jump, 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 jump drive. Um, efficiency. Oh, it is efficiency four. Did we not finish our efficiency five? Oh, we didn't try for efficiency five. Okay, right, yeah. We considered it and we didn't. Um, okay, uh, 10,000 ton. Mm, yeah, well, we need the extra engine to be able to make up for the weight of the drive because it's such a large drive. Uh, you are going to be a commercial jump drive. Praise. Praise everything. It's so much simpler. Commercial drive. Um, jump squadron size. We could go four. We're not going to. We don't care about that. It's also cheaper. Um, size goes up if we make it bigger. Uh, more. Sorry. The size of the drive goes up if we make it able to jump more people. Um, we need to be able to jump a 40,000 ton ship. Oh, right. Okay. It appears that commercial jump drives are always a tier below military jump drives. I didn't actually didn't know this. Uh, so commercial jump drive is going to be efficiency three. Well, that's pretty brutal. Um, the squadron size is going to be two, which is actually not a thing that you can manually do. And the jump rate is going to be less. Uh, this is fine. It just means that we're going to just tack this straight onto the ship as it kind of exists. And it's maybe going to get a tiny bit of an engine buff if we can fit one in, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. It's going to be produced by Dracos Turbines. I think it's all good to go. Yep. Let's instant it. And then fresh tech. Uh, probably should have put more info in the name because unfortunately the just name doesn't contain anything particularly helpful. It's like, hey, 40k. I'm like, yes, it's a 40k jump drive. But you haven't said anything like the other two parameters here. Sure. Um, we can't fit another 3000 engine in. That's the downside here. So, our steel blake commercial iron drives might need to change. Because we could fit, like, two and two thirds. Oh, yeah, they're 3,000 tons each. So, I mean, you know, two 4,000 tons or four 2,000 ton engines, I think. So, uh, design tech. Um, engine, iron drive, ramp the power down, ramp the size up. Okay, and now we ramp the size, the, 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 size, the size down. Um, we could just go and say, let's go for three engines. Because we're going to go 8,000 tons, three engines in roughly 8,000 tons is about 2.5, maybe a little bit higher. Um... 2.6. That gives a bit of wiggle room. We do have fuel we can dump. Like, we do have excess fuel. So. Two point eight might be starting to push that. But I consider it worthwhile trying. So we're going to instant this. Fresh tech. Which I didn't add a name for. Uh, we're going to rename the component. And I'm going to say, you are Steely Lake. Okay, one, two, three. Ooh, four tons under. And the range is acceptable. Okay. And we got almost back to our normal speed. Lock the class. Great. No one noticed that. Um, me hard. Dragon Man, Retool, Ragland, and then construct a Ragland. Ah, January 67. Nice. Okay, your normal programming can continue because I was an idiot and forgot to put a jump drive on my ship. Ignore me. Okay, we've completed our turret tracking speed. Note that we've only just got the 27th Navy Sponges out. We're going to be dumping 20 at a time. It's pretty good to me. Uh, right, let's go to our turret tracking speed. Turret tracking speed. Um, 
What was that under? Answers. It's under energy weapons. Yes. Do we want to do the three thousand? How long will it take you to do this? Out of interest, the visible light laser. Uh, not long at all. Okay, yeah, you should definitely do this because we want to use it in our ships if we put beams on them. Although, will we want to put beams on them or are we going to just rely on a few missiles? They are going to be pretty small and our tech is kind of terrible. Um, probably going to be just missiles, but we'll see. Okay. Well, with that, we've done a lot this episode, I feel. I, like, we've... We've got this whole relation going on now with the Jazzer aliens. We've got ourselves uh, a commercial carrier being built. We have the Fishties almost operational. Our scanning is going pretty well. We're actually not quite, but we're almost to the stage where we've got that full coverage that we wanted. Um, we will have another jump point out of Distant Roman. Dab at Yabashidu is the only real thing that we need to explore more. One, two, three. We need to explore out of Yabashidu and out of Davit, and then whatever is out of Davit, we need to explore again. Yabashidu, we haven't even finished the survey so far, so we need to work on that. Uh, stabilization is going ahead. We've almost got to the stage where we can go to Subject Delta and start claiming planets there, which we desperately want to do to make sure that uh, we get them and the Jazz aliens don't. We have production going on pretty well, I want to say, for our terraforming base. You know, we're talking 25% done almost, so it's underway. I mean, it's not going to be done super soon, but that's pretty nice. And we should have some production finishing, stuff like mass drivers, uh, 56, uh, 65, um, Grand Force Construction Complex, 64, and then we can add them in and then that terraform base can do its work. We also have the population of some of these worlds starting to skyrocket. Worker shortage is still definitely a thing. But... A million workers available there. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.4. We could start shipping a little bit more in the way of like mines, etc. And there is mining going on on these planets now, so we're getting a little bit back on Earth. Not a lot, but a little bit. Either way, this is a good place to end it. Uh, if you do want to go check out the Discord for the interactivity, etc., uh, link down below. It's also a really good place to be able to follow all my videos, because there's an announcement thing there where all my videos get posted. And my streams, although I'm not streaming at the moment. Um, I might be in the future. Um, so if you want to go check that out, you can, and hell, you could mute the rest of the server if you wanted to just keep that so you have a list of when my videos go out, because it's better than the subscriber feed. But if you do want to subscribe on YouTube, you can do so, and hit the bell, etc. Also, commenting, liking, all really helpful. For now, though, I've been Israelisium, and stay shiny.